I printed this cool candle holder and unfortunately after I printed this, look at it. That's right, look at all the stringing. That is why today I wanna to test four different methods that we can use to eliminate the stringing after it's already happened. Let's say your nozzle temperature was too high or you forgot to enable retraction. What can you do now to both somewhat quickly fix the stringing issue but also make the print look good? Let's hop into the very first thing I want to test. So the first method isn't gonna be a fan favorite. It's certainly not mine. Take your clippers and you can simply just cut off the strings. Now there are a lot of detriments and a lot of negatives to this. One, it's time consuming. Two, it's not super easy. Three, it's gonna be really hard to clean this up. In some situations it may not be too bad, but look at this thing. It's gonna be an absolute nightmare to do this, but I'm gonna try to do it, see what it looks like, and I'm gonna compare all four methods that I've tried. So it's gonna take a while, but let's go ahead and get this started. So I hope everyone forgives me. I am not gonna do every single one of these holes with my little bit of pliers. I've spent five minutes and I've done the top row here and then a couple more. So ultimately, as you can imagine, it's extremely difficult to do this. It still doesn't look good. There's still a lot of little bits and pieces there. Here on the bottom of my workspace, I just have a ton of little bits of filament and string. It's not feasible. In some, some prints, maybe it's okay. If you don't have that many and it doesn't need to be perfect, but it's it, using pliers really just, it doesn't cut it. So I didn't do the whole thing. I'm really hoping one of these other methods works well. And then you will just forgive me and I can say, hey, I tried the pliers, but I'm gonna move on. Speaking of that, let's move on right now. The next thing I've been told to try is a hair dryer. So let's just boot this up, see how the hair dryer does. So the idea with the hairdryer, of course, is that it will heat up. The air will then start to kind of melt the filament and then it should be really easy to take off or it just disintegrates it. So right here, I just have a normal from Walmart Conair, you know, heat dryer. Uh, there's nothing special about it. There's an off, a high and a low setting. I'm gonna turn this to high. I'm gonna get it pretty close. And let's just see what happens. I really don't know how successful. Maybe this will be great, maybe it won't. One way to find out. All right, so I just tested the hair dryer. Uh, first thing to note, uh, you see that? Obviously you have to consider I was using high heat and it's, e it's essentially melting the 3D print. Now in some ways, this obviously is a big negative. In this case, my print is already kind of like uh, topsy-turvy, twisted, so you can't really tell. But if you need something that is straight, that could be a huge detriment. Uh, it's gonna be hard to, to show. I'm gonna try to maybe put my fingers through so you can see the contrast. I don't know, it, it didn't work super great. Again, I used it on high, it's, it somewhat kind of is doing something. Maybe if you have very light stringing, this might work. And again, I only have one hair dryer. It was set on high. It's a Walmart special. Not saying that this is salon quality hair dryer stuff here, but I think it's about what you're probably going to see and the results aren't uber great. Also, if you're worried about it, if you're, you know, you're melting this filament, and there's, there's a, a fume, there's a, a smell, I don't wanna say a fume. You smell burnt plastic. So if you don't wanna be ingesting that stuff, like I just straight up ate the air trying to test this, you know, that's something else to consider. Maybe you don't wanna do that. It may mess with your print. It didn't really do a super great job. Maybe, maybe a little better than just straight up using pliers, but not much. But we're gonna stick with the heat. And we're gonna stick with the heat by going to an actual heat gun next. Next, we have a heat gun. So I know you're thinking, 
Adam, you doofus, you just tried a hair dryer, that didn't work, so why is a heat gun gonna work? My thinking is that one, heat gun is gonna get hotter. Two, heat gun has a nozzle, so rather than an entire huge area of the 3D print getting blasted with hot air, I can kind of focus it to be just a bit more precise, so hopefully the entire print doesn't start melting. And uh, that's about it. This is a 300 watt heat gun, and I mean, I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's turn her on, give it a shot. Oh mama, we've got a winner. That actually worked pretty well. You saw the entire process. I went through every single hole. Are they absolutely perfect? No, but I think I could make them perfect. So this really focused the heat. You can see the 3D print isn't bendy. It's not melted like with the hair dryer. And what happened is the little string started to kind of just fall apart and melt and they kind of crumpled. And now they're on the inside, which I could easily take my pliers, cut those off, use this again to probably completely eliminate them. And in some of them, certainly I could just use my fingernail and they're gonna fall right off. That took less than two minutes to go through every single hole and I think it looks pretty good. For this particular print, I think I could even leave it at that, but it would be really easy to clean up after this. Uh, this is just an eBay, you know, $13, $15 heat gun. Super cheap. You don't need to go to, to you know, Lowe's and buy a $40 one. 300 watts is what I'm using here. It says 50 to 60 hertz. If that matters, just plug it into the wall, run it, that actually worked really well, easily the best that we've tried so far. All right, the final method, this one I'm not gonna lie, scares me a little bit. This is using actual flame. So I am going to use this little lighter. I, I, I would lie if I say I'm not a little nervous. Uh, hopefully I don't burn my house down. If so, I'm doing it for you, the people. So, uh, I mean, with all the last three methods, obviously we're using heat. Obviously you're gonna have the issue of, see right there? I mean, it worked. It, it let out some pretty nasty, uh, nasty smell. It also looked like it legitimately caught on. Yep, it's literally catching on fire. So we've got that going for us, but but it worked. It act, yeah, it worked. You just have to be smart on how you do it. So here, let me, uh, let me try this for all these, see how it goes and recap. All right, with the lighter, that it actually worked. I would say it worked, it's tough, maybe, I'm gonna say about as well as the heat gun. I think the results are about a draw. It definitely burnt the little strings. There's still a little bit of cleanup you're gonna to have to do, but it straight up worked. Now, the reason I would still maybe recommend the heat gun is because one, you're using real flame. Now, I kind of tested it a little bit more on near the bottom, like let the flame sit there a bit more. It didn't actually catch on fire. I didn't see an actual fire be created. It didn't even make the entire print hot enough to where it became pliable and it started to actually melt and, and fall apart or be bendy. So we have that going for us. It also let off some real nasty, not again, I don't wanna use the word fumes, but it stinks. It's like you're burning plastic. So if you do this, maybe any of these, to be honest, have a really well ventilated room or ideally just straight up do it outside. But this does in fact work. So that ultimately is gonna be my suggestion. Get a heat gun or buy one of these cheap little, you know, just Bic lighters. Either one works. I kind of prefer the heat gun. I feel like maybe that's a little safer. I'm trying to think again, if you have like small prints and you have some stringing, 
actually putting flame to it may bend some of the smaller pieces. I feel like the heat gun might allow you to be a bit more intricate, but both methods really do work. Forget, forget the pliers, forget the hair, hair dryer. That's not going to work. I even kind of thought about using chemicals or something. You're not going to be able to get strong enough chemicals to burn the strings. And I mean, it's just not going to work either. So ultimately, you have a print. The best way to go if it already has stringing and there's nothing to do and you don't want to print it again because it takes hours and hours, use you a nice heat gun or a little bit of fire and you're good to go. I hope this helped you like it has helped me. I've got a bit more cleanup to do here in my candle holder, but thanks a ton. If you got any comments or other suggestions, comment them below. Maybe I'll make another video and give them a try. Thanks for watching folks. Happy printing.